I'd now like to introduce Dr. Antti Ivaninen. After receiving his DVM degree from the College of Veterinary Medicine in Helsinki, Finland, Dr. Ivan Ivan worked as a district veterinarian in Northern Finland. He then turned to academia and received research training at the University of Ulu and at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. Since then, he has worked at the University of Helsinki, where he is currently leading the bachelor's program in veterinary medicine. His research group is interested in interactions in development. As always, please post any questions you have for Dr. Ivan Ivan in the chat box, and he will answer questions from the audience as part of the live Q&A after his presentation. Welcome, Dr. Antti Ivan Ivan. Good day. Uh, my name is Antti Ivan Ivan, and I come from the University of Helsinki in Northern Finland, uh, sorry, Northern Europe. And uh, the, <clears throat> the presentation of today is on the studies on canine hip dysplasia. The outline of the presentation is here. We will start with the normal development and anatomy of the hip joint, and then proceed on to discussing hip, dis hip dysplasia as a developmental disorder. We then briefly discuss some of the risk factors that have been suggested to uh, promote to the uh, development of the disease and then some genetic background studies. Uh, then I will describe our own studies. Uh, there are two sets of studies. One set of studies was conducted on German shepherds, and the other set of studies uh, was conducted on a 10 breed large uh, cohort of, of dogs. Uh, then I have some, some summary and conclusions, and. Uh, as a short glimpse of the future, how I see it. The pelvis and femur are ossified during the uh, fetal uh, life so that uh, ossification begins in the ileum around 40 days of gestation. This is uh, followed by uh, at the appearance of an ossification center in the ischium at about 45 days and finally in the pubic bone just before birth. 55 to 60 days of gestation. These figures are from Beagle. Uh, the acetabular bone, which is uh, in the center of acetabulum, ossifies only after birth. The femoral shaft is uh, ossified during the fetal life but the heads, um, the ends of the femur are not ossified at birth. All of this means basically that uh, the uh, hip joint in the young animal is very prone to uh, mechanical forces. And uh, this is of course, uh, quite natural as the uh, animal is growing and, uh, and uh, uh, the joint has to accommodate to the growth of the animal. In the uh, mature pelvis, uh, we can see in this picture, uh, which is a 3D surface rendering of a computer, computer tomography image or stack of images. Um, we can see here on the left, we can see a uh, view from the 
uh, prodor dorsal lateral point of view. Uh, the wing of ilium is seen clearly, uh, and to the caudal there is the isium. Uh, in the in the figure we have marked uh, the edge of the acetabulum, the dorsal edge, and the cranial lateral edge, which are something uh, that are uh, evaluated in radiographic images when screening for hip dysplasia. In addition, uh, not, math, not marked in this figure, uh, there are some osteophyte formations uh, indicative of uh, osteoarthritis, uh, which typically uh, form in the neck of the femoral head. On the image on the right, uh, this is a ventrodorsal view. One can see uh, how the Norberg angle is defined. So it is defined uh, by the uh, craniolateral uh, acetabular edge and the center of the femoral head. Uh, this figure uh, illustrates the normal structure of articular cartilage. It is uh, divided in three, three zones. The superficial zone is on the top, marked A, and this contains a quite dense uh, population of uh, chondrocytes, uh, which are more or less parallel to the surface of the, uh, of the joint. Um, the superficial zone is uh, secreting lubricin, which is uh, a lubricant and uh, uh, makes it easier for the joint to function. The middle zone, marked as D, contains more round and a uh, bit larger uh, chondrocytes and is very active in producing uh, the matrix, uh, which is predominantly containing different uh, proteoglycans and uh, type 2 collagen. Uh, the deep zone contains stacks of chondrocytes, which are more or less perpendicular to the uh, surface of the joint. And uh, between the deep zone and then the ossified subchondral bone, one finds a mark, which is called a tight mark, that separates the bone from the cartilage. It may be worth emphasizing that uh, the matrix in cartilage contains a lot of water. Uh, the protoglycans contain uh, molecular uh, groups of the structure like uh, chondroitin sulfate and keratin sulfate, which are very hydrophilic and, uh, and uh, uh, attract water. And this is quite important for the physical properties of the, of the tissue. The chondrocytes take about 2% of the volume in the cartilage, uh, which is uh, devoid of vessels normally and devoid of nerves. The chondrocytes are more or less arrested in a state which is called the pre-hypertrophic state, and they are uh, they are undergoing a minimal turnover. Their main function is to maintain the integrity of the 
of the tissue by producing uh, the matrix material. Now uh, we can go uh, to the disease, uh, and uh, it is considered a developmental uh, disorder, but uh, non congenital. So the animals are basically born without any signs of illness, but the earliest signs can be detected depending on the case already at two weeks of age. Uh, the disease normally manifests itself in rapidly growing young individuals and most often uh, the large sized breeds are affected but the disease is not confined to these breeds. German Shepherds, which is an important uh, breed in our studies, uh, displays prevalence between 19 to 45 percent in, um, in the studies that I have seen. But uh, according to the statistics at the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals in the US, uh, the frequency as measured by dysplastic uh, evaluations uh, out of all evaluations of the hip joint varies from 0 to 71% bet uh, between different breeds. The main clinical signs in the disease include joint laxity, and varying degrees of pain. They are accompanied by morphological signs, which can be quite variable and uh, not necessarily correlate with the clinical signs. The disease is considered chronic and progressive and very often uh, progresses towards osteoarthritis, which can be a very painful condition uh, and severely impact on the quality of life of the animal. In this figure, we can see a typical uh, radiograph of the hip when they are evaluated for hip dysplasia. On the right, we see a normal radiograph where one can observe that the fit of the femoral head in the acetabulum is quite good and the femoral head sits in the acetabulum uh, quite snugly. On the image on the left, on the other hand, there are dysplastic changes and the femoral head does not fit well in the acetabulum. The joint Particular surfaces are not congruent, and uh, one can also observe some osteophytes in the uh, femoral neck. So, about the phenotype of hip dysplasia. Uh, the most common way to diagnose uh, hip dysplasia, and uh, at least uh, in Finland, that is the uh, predominant uh, sort of official way, is through radiological imaging. And uh, radiographs are taken in what we call a hip extended position, 
that you saw on the previous slide from the ventral dorsal uh, projection. And from these radiographs, different uh, substrates are assessed and an aggregation or an aggregate score of the substrates is somehow uh, combined or computed, which reduces the dimensionality of the phenotype to uh, a single figure, which can be a number or, 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 or class. And the different systems that uh, are used uh, most commonly is the European system, uh, which is standardized by the Fédération Sinologique Internationale, and uh, uh, other similar systems are in the US, the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals uh, standard, and in Great Britain and Australia, uh, the standards are defined by the British Veterinary Association. Basically, all of these systems uh, make an aggregate score of various substrates. Subgrades. Then um, another approach to the phenotype is to measure the degree of joint laxity. And uh, in this category, we have two systems that I am aware of. One is uh, a commercial system developed in the University of Pennsylvania called PenHIP. And uh, then we have uh, another system uh, which is very similar to the PenHIP, but uses a little bit different uh, 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 instruments. And it's called uh, laxity index, and it's uh, uh, not commercialized uh, to the extent of PenHIP. Um, in uh, 2018, these two systems were systematically uh, compared, and uh, this study showed quite good correlation between the two assays. Both assays uh, uh, depend on the distance between femoral head center and the acetabular center when the uh, hips are distracted. That means pulled away from the sockets. And the distance is then divided by the radius of the femoral head. This gives a figure which typically ranges from 0.1 to 1. And a, a small figure means a good fit. And a large figure means uh, a bad fit uh, and imposes a risk of developing um, the disease. Then a few words about the risk factors. Uh, some of the suggested risk factors um, deal with exercise. It is uh, quite logical and known that uh, good muscle condition can uh, prevent the development and uh, ameliorate the, the signs of, of uh, poorly fitting joints. And uh, in young animals, uh, it is considered that free exercise uh, is protective, but uh, for example, going in stairs, it is uh, considered risky and uh, should be avoided if possible. Uh, then nutrition is another uh, risk factor. Uh, 
especially uh, the amount of feed. So if the feed intake is limited also in the long run after the animal is fully grown, it has a protective effect on the, um, on the development of, of this disease. Young puppies are then uh, quite prone to dietary excess calcium. Uh, so this should be taken into consideration because excess calcium can delay the endochondral ossification of the developing uh, joint and uh, or the bones and also inhibit the skeletal maturation or delay it. It also follows from this nutritional discussion that uh, obesity as such is uh, a risk factor for, for the disease. There are also uh, some studies which uh, indicate or which point out to the hormone, hormones, especially relaxin and estrogen, but uh, I'm not sure if these are all conclusive and maybe not easy to avoid because some of these studies refer also to uh, the hormones uh, with from the milk of the dam of the mother. So what happens is that we get this kind of vicious circle where the different uh, risk factors uh, promote joint laxity and uh, increased laxity, then, uh, then uh, promotes uh, wear and tear, uh, kind of deterioration of the joint, leading to uh, increasingly incongruent articular surfaces and uh, shallowness of the acetabulum and eventually uh, to various degrees of subluxation and uh, also tear of the articular cartilage. Then um, about the uh, genetic genetics that we know that uh, contribute to hip dysplasia. Um, various uh, estimates of heritability, heritability have been published and they vary typically from 0.1 to 0.8 and uh, this means that uh, there is a strong genetic component uh, which uh, plays a role in this uh, disease. Interestingly, uh, the heritability estimates that are based on genomic data are a bit different than those based on pedigrees. Nevertheless, uh, studies have been conducted which have then shown that uh, there are several different loci which are associated with this uh, disease at least 28 autosomes are involved, perhaps more. Uh, the problem with these studies is that uh, the associations have been difficult to validate using independent cohorts. This does not necessarily mean that the studies are not uh, done well. Uh, but it could also mean that there are uh, major differences in allele frequencies and, and, and uh, the genetic background in different uh, populations and also 
maybe different uh, degrees of uh, linkage disequilibrium uh, in different uh, populations and different places in the genome. Um, a notable exception uh, in these uh, uh, risk factors is the fibrillin 2 gene, uh, which is, is one of the few, maybe the only only example where uh, we can find um, evidence from not only the association but also uh, expression data which shows that the expression levels of the gene associate with the disease. Then uh, I will describe shortly our own studies. We have been doing um, um, an association study in German shepherds, or actually several. And uh, this figure shows our cohort. Uh, in total, 769 animals in different uh, hip dysplasia categories as indicated. The plot here is uh, what we call a multidimensional scaling plot uh, based on the uh, genomic data. And it shows clearly that the population is uh, divided into uh, different strata. Um, we have in German Shepherds, we have two lines, the working line, uh, which is on the right, and the show line, which is on the left. And then we have some individuals which are uh, what we call a mixed line in the middle. And, and this shows that uh, the genetic background in these lines is quite different. And it's important to control this uh, stratification when doing the studies. Uh, this is a summary of our results. We conducted five different uh, uh, studies uh, in the first line. In the, uh, in the first column, we have the number of animals, and the second column in, uh, indicates the phenotype, and then the chromosome, uh, and uh, the lo locus in the chromosome, and the markers, and then the genes within the loci. Um, the first experiment uh, was on, on osteoarthritis. So zero means no osteoarthritis, and then one to three uh, different degrees of osteoarthritis. The second and third one are, are measuring the, um, the fit of the, of, the, uh, of the femoral head and the congruence of, of the joint surfaces, basically, uh, uh, it is the distance of the uh, center of the femoral head from the dorsal acetabular edge. And this varies from <clears throat> from uh, 5 to 14, uh, minus 5 to 14 millimeters. And uh, 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 the smaller the value, uh, the, then the better the joint. And then we have uh, Two studies on, or, or, or <clears throat> two, two sets of data on the on the hip dysplasia uh, phenotype as uh, defined by the by the uh, standard. Uh, in the in the fourth line, we are comparing uh, completely healthy animals with uh, all degrees of disease, and in the in the fifth line, we are comparing mild disease with uh, with uh, moderate to severe disease. And uh, the candidate genes are briefly discussed here. Uh, the first candidate gene is uh, called NOX. Um, and um, it is located in the chromosome 1 and it associated, associates with, um, I mean, this locus associates with osteoarthritis and also uh, in the uh, categorized hip 
dysplasia. An OX3 uh, is a member of NADPH oxidases, which catalyze the production of uh, hydrogen peroxide, which in turn uh, can yield uh, other molecules which are damaging to articular cartilage. Uh, but on the other hand, NOx3, to my knowledge, has not been specifically uh, detected as expressed in the articular cartilage. So it remains to be seen what is actually the role of this uh, for the disease. And the next uh, candidate gene is called NOG, which encodes for a protein called NOGIN. And uh, this gene is located in a locus in chromosome 9, and the locus associates with incongruence and uh, severe or moderate to severe uh, phenotype of dysplasia. Nogin uh, belongs to the BMP family of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, B Nogin inhibits the BMP family morphogens. And uh, these uh, morphogens are known to positively regulate the formation of bone and cartilage. Nogin, in, in particular, has been uh, shown to be a key player in the development of bones and joints. And uh, uh, we found uh, 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 markers uh, upstream of uh, Nogin, uh, which associate with uh, uh, the severe uh, disease. And then we also find uh, an, uh, a deletion variant uh, uh, that associates with uh, normal hips or with mild disease. And uh, this uh, variant also inhibits the reporter gene expression of uh, in vitro. So um, when we looked at the, looked at these uh, uh, markers in chromosome nine, we see uh, we we could identify two loci about uh, uh, six uh, megabases apart, and we decided to to uh, to, to to sequence. Uh, uh, this region spanning about seven megabases from uh, 48 uh, animals. And this uh, resequencing uh, yielded uh, a lot of uh, sequence data. And from this, uh, we could identify uh, 217 uh, snipper, SNP variants, of which uh, 28 were statistically associated with uh, the phenotype. And these 28 variants have been marked with a green vertical bar in this figure. So um, we see two clusters of, of uh, significant markers. And in the um, larger cluster uh, between uh, around uh, uh, 31 megabases, uh, there is uh, quite near to the uh, peak uh, this uh, deletion variant sitting uh, right in the right place. And uh, if we look at uh, this uh, variant uh, a little bit closer, we can see in this figure on the top uh, sequence from human, uh, followed by the sequence in the uh, reference genome from the dog. And then we see three uh, variants uh, from our own, own data. And uh, uh, in the middle, uh, we see this locus uh, of the dog and then on the human uh, aligned and uh, the deletion is marked with a blue triangle in the, in the dog locus. And in the corresponding place in the human, we see uh, uh, signs of uh, epigenetic uh, marks, which are associated with uh, regulation of, of gene expression, 
and also uh, we can see uh, uh, transcription factor and binding sites this data from the ENCODE project. So uh, with this information, we then proceeded to analyze this uh, deletion variant in vitro. And um, what we did is we cloned it uh, in front of a reporter a gene construct. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, the deletion uh, variants these are the same these are the same uh, uh, same numbers or same um, symbols as in in this uh, sequences a b and c so the a a sequence is the longest and the c uh, b and c are, are, are deletion variants we can see that the uh, deletion uh, inhibits uh, the, uh, uh, the expression gene, uh, ex uh, expression of the reporter gene in vitro when uh, compared with the, uh, the full length uh, variant. And uh, we tested this in two, two different cell lines. Uh, on the uh, left, we have uh, human embryonic kidney cells, and on the right, we have a human osteosarcoma cell line. Um, and uh, when we then uh, think how this deletion might be related with the uh, disease, we have uh, this kind of hypothesis that uh, we show that the deletion uh, inhibits the expression of the reporter gene. So if this uh, actually regulates the expression of Nogin, this, this means that the deletion variant would increase the levels of BMPs, which then would promote the formation of the bone and cartilage and protect the animals, animal against this wear and tear of the joint. Um, and this is what we see that uh, the deletion variant is associated with healthy or mild phenotype. And then interestingly, when we compared uh, different reference sequences that we could align, so we can see that uh, from various species, the dog is different from the other, other species. So it's the second last one is the dog sequence. And uh, this is the boxer sequence. Uh, and uh, we don't know what, what this means. We know that there are different uh, variants in the population, but uh, does it perhaps mean that the reference allele is not the original ancient allele? This we cannot yet say we, we, we will need to study this further. Uh, then the last candidate gene is nanos, uh, located in the locus in chromosome 28. And uh, this uh, gene product regulates the activity of metalloproteinase gene. Uh, and this uh, gene product of the MT1 MMP can activate the MP2, which in turn can degrade the uh, extracellular matrix in osteoarthritis. But we have no, no other uh, evidence apart from this association that uh, these are related, the nanos is related to the, uh, the disease. Then uh, I described uh, shortly the validation study. Uh, we looked at the literature and uh, tested uh, 52 SNPs that had been previously associated with, associated with the disease uh, using a cohort of 1,572 dogs from 10 breeds. Uh, it may be worth uh, mentioning that uh, this cohort does not include German Shepherds. 
and then we did this uh, association, association, association analysis both within and across breeds. Uh, and what we could show is that, uh, uh, or we could validate uh, uh, 23 of these 52 markers, uh, which uh, are residing in 21 loci in 14 autosomes. And interestingly, uh, when we look at uh, all the genes that are annotated in this loci, these 250 uh, protein encoding candidate genes, um, they contain an overrepresentation of a reaction pathway called nedulation, which is um, uh, ubiquitin-like uh, small protein that is tagged onto target proteins. And, uh, and the role of nedulation has been implicated uh, quite a lot in, in, in tumors, but also in immune, uh, autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. So uh, this is something that should be perhaps uh, studied further after, uh, after uh, more validation data. We could locate, uh, we could validate one of these three uh, loci in the German Shepherd study. So this uh, uh, locus in chromosome one, which is uh, associated with osteoarthritis. So then briefly, uh, the conclusions. So we identified uh, in the German Shepherd study three loci. And the one in chromosome one was associated with uh, osteoarthritis. And the other one in chromosome nine uh, was interesting, interestingly associated with the uh, severe disease uh, when categorized by the radiographs. Then we validated uh, 21 of the uh, 21 loci. Uh, with 23 markers uh, from the previously uh, identified markers. And uh, the candidate genes in these loci uh, encode for proteins that, uh, that uh, contain an overrepresentation of the nedulation pathway members. Uh, and uh, we can only uh, conclude uh, what is known actually before, uh, that the association uh, depends quite heavily on the population at study. And then uh, the contribution of the individual uh, locus is uh, relatively small and varies also by uh, different populations. <clears throat> uh, then, uh, more generally, when we think about these genome-wide association studies, it's important to realize that it's only a measure of association and by no means uh, tells anything about the causality. Uh, it may be causal, maybe not. And if it's not causal, it may be uh, that uh, there is a causal uh, variant uh, linked nearby and uh, there is a lot of work to reveal all these causal variants. Um, and then it's important also to, to realize the reliability of these studies that you have to really carefully um, make sure that you control for the confounding factors and this population stratification is an important issue in this respect. Then a few words about the future. Um, I must confess that I'm rather disappointed. We did a lot of work, but, uh, but what can we really say about it? I think to really, uh, to really study the biology, we need to have bigger samples. And uh, of course, uh, humans are very different uh, from the genetic uh, perspective compared uh, to dogs. But uh, nevertheless, it's 
exciting and also depressing uh, to read this uh, new new study uh, on the human height, where uh, the the they could show that uh, millions of individuals are needed to to uh, to saturate the, the 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 model and to to explain all the genetic variation of the common common variants. Uh, they also concluded that, that there are more than nine, uh, more than seven thousand independent loci which contribute to the height of human beings. And uh, <clears throat> if uh, uh, if the hip dysplasia is anything similar, uh, we have a long way to go to 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 get a, a good grip on the biology. We also need a denser marker mat. Uh, there are more um, denser chips now available. We used uh, Illumina 173,000 uh, marker chip. Uh, and uh, imputation has been also successfully applied, which can also uh, give a little bit denser uh, markers. Then I think uh, it should be also discussed uh, what is uh, the perfect phenotype, I mean, how good is the phenotype, uh, which of the subtraits are really important, um, and how should we quantify it. There have been also some studies on the biomarkers. Um, so um, the phenotype is quite complex, and uh, we should consider carefully different ways to, to, re to reduce the dimensionality uh, of the phenotype to, to get more power in, in the analysis. But of course, the reduction in dimensions uh, should not uh, uh, invalidate the, uh, the, the measurement. I mean, the, the phenotype should, should still uh, represent the disease. And then uh, last, uh, I have uh, listed the references, uh, selected references in my presentation, and then I would like to acknowledge uh, Lea Mikkola, uh, whose PhD uh, work uh, is the basis for this presentation, and also Hannes Lohi, who is a very successful uh, canine genetist in, in Finland and the Finnish uh, Kennel Club and its member associations and the financial support from the Academy of Finland and the Canaan Health Foundation. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much, Dr. Ivan Einan, for that uh, in-depth review of hip dysplasia. Um, just a couple of points for our audience before I switch over. I want to note that the closing remarks, uh, the agenda has been updated. So closing for the sum, uh, summit will be at 445. But we do have time now to take some of the questions that you've asked throughout the presentation and do a Q&A session, uh, at least a brief one, before we can uh, send you off to the closing. So don't forget that you can use the Q&A bar in your seminar window to send those questions through to us. And my apologies, once again, thank you, Dr. Ivan Einan, for your presentation and for joining us here at the summit. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, uh, we've got a, oh, go ahead. So uh, you are telling me the questions or, yeah. Yes, yes, I will share with you some of the questions we have already. Um, one of them is around what recommendations do you have for for breeders or people that are raising uh, neonate puppies um, to reduce the chances of environmentally developed hip dysplasia, given some of the studies that you talked about earlier? Yeah, uh, we haven't studied this ourselves, but what I have understood from, from the literature, um, it seems that uh, uh, the, uh, the young animals' tissues are quite soft. So, uh, it would make sense to, to try to make sure that uh, there are no 
you know, accidents or bad strains which can cause damage to the soft tissues. And once you have uh, a damage, uh, then uh, it may it may lead to like a deterioration of the condition because you are making uh, the joint unstable. Uh, and of course, uh, one should uh, not one should discourage the the calorie intake so that the puppies don't grow too fast because when they gain weight rapidly, uh, the the muscular skeletal system doesn't necessarily keep up with the increased weight so i think this uh, and uh, this there are studies on that on the calcium so uh, so you should 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 avoid too much calcium in the in the feed um that's that's what comes to my mind yeah that's that's actually helpful i know as a breeder there's a lot of discussions about how cute uh puppies are when they're when they're a little chubby and fat, um, but to your point, we might not be doing the right thing by by having having them grow that way in terms of preserving the best opportunity for their hips. So keep them keep them lean. It sounds like. Yeah. Another question is based on the research, and this this gets a little technical, so it, it might be a misunderstanding. But it, did it is it true that you found mild and normal hips? Sort of clustered together, which might indicate that the difference in those ratings was more environmental versus the genetic uh, signature that you seem to find more correlated with moderate and severe dysplasia. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I don't want to make that conclusion, but I think our studies indicate that it's possible that there is uh, uh, the genetic uh, risk factors are, are sort of. Uh, uh, many and different kinds, and some of them are, are promoting uh, the early development of hip dysplasia. And you may need to have uh, other risk factors to develop the, the moderate to severe cases on top of that. And uh, and at least in our uh, our population, what we studied is uh, nogging. Uh, Variants or the regulatory variants of the noggin gene, they seem to associate with the with the moderate to severe forms of the dysplasia. Right. Okay. Yeah. That that that'll be interesting to see if it uh, if there's additional research in that in that vein. Um, yeah. Have and you? If, if I if I if I uh, may continue a little bit on that, uh, I okay. think it's quite clear that uh, the genetic uh, risk factors are. Uh, quite many, and they are varying in different populations. So, I mean, uh, depending on the population and the genetic background, some of the risk factors are sort of uh, important for that particular population and not in others. Uh, and uh, as a general sort of uh, picture, we know that this disease is polygenic in nature. In nature, so. Uh, so it's it's an oversimplification to to look at just uh, one risk factor, uh, genetic risk factor. You have to see the whole picture and the uh, individual contribution of each uh, different uh, risk factor is um, varying between populations. And on the general, it might be quite small on the overall risk. Right. Um, pivoting a little. The next question is, um, is there anything in the research or or that you could recommend about um, how to prevent dogs from declining or having degenerative issues with hip dysplasia once they've developed it? Or is it pretty much once it's been diagnosed, we know it's going to get worse? Is there a way to prevent um, some of the decline, I guess, is the question. Yeah, I, I think it's... Uh the current understanding that it's a chronic disease you cannot get rid of it but of course if you uh, try to uh, avoid overweight and 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 not i mean um, yeah i think overweight is maybe the most important thing that you you try to keep the dog lean um, 
and uh, in good muscular condition because uh, if you have strong muscles you can support the hip even if it's not in the perfect possible shape that makes sense. Um, but but i don't think you can you can get rid of it of course if you are let's say that your your the condition is varying that uh, you have you are you're managing to reduce weight if the dog is overweight i think it can alleviate the symptoms but it doesn't change the 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 um it doesn't change the the joint right uh, okay and then it's, um, it's, it's it's interesting if you think of a young dog which is still growing um i don't think i don't i'm not aware of any studies on that but if you if you think about for example uh, the elbow uh, elbow joint uh, young dogs may have sort of a, a temporary problem with the elbow joints and once the uh, growth is complete uh, then the joint sort of aligns properly so um, in the young animal of course um, you are in a dyna more dynamic process so it may be possible that uh, in the future maybe you you can develop some kind of uh, uh measures to to sort of uh to accentuate uh, the healing process in the growing animal but uh, i'm not aware of any any studies at the present well we look forward to learning more about hip dysplasia as you and others continue the research once again i'd like to thank you dr ivanainen for sharing uh your research and joining us here at the summit it uh it's been fascinating I am uh, a bit sad to say we're out of time here and this is the last session of the day, but please uh, for our attendees, uh, do feel free to head over back to the auditorium and the closing remarks will start in a couple of minutes. And there will be information there on how to, you can go back to review all of the sessions you have seen or view some of the ones that you weren't able to get to. So once again, thank you, Dr. Ivaninen, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you.